Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 20 dumbest video game controversies. This is on Steam. They're selling this. Don't do that. Don't do that. For this list, we're looking at the most nonsensical scandals that have racked the games industry over the years. Let us know in the comments which you think was the most pointless thing to get upset about. Number 20, Sonic Fox Cameo, Skullgirls. <laughs> Popular 2D fighting game Skullgirls has been going strong for years, and one notable member of the gaming community is an avid fan and player, Sonic Fox. Sonic Fox is one of the most talented fighting game players of all time, and was honored when Skullgirls gave them a cameo in one of the arenas. <laughs> The problem was that Sonic Fox is a gay, non-binary furry, something they're totally unapologetic about, and a lot of people got worked up about their inclusion in the game. People were so worked up, in fact, that Skullgirls got itself review-bombed, and some suggested adding a toggle to remove the cameo to avoid causing offense. Um, I'm also super gay, so I mean, uh, I want to give it a shot. <laughs> Number 19, Adoption Jokes. Fatty, adopted fatty, fatty fatty, no parents. Both of Portal 2's antagonists, GLaDOS and Wheatley, have a large repertoire of adoption jokes to subject Chell to depending on which of them is the villain at the time. But one father took issue with the antagonist of the game being cruel and unreasonable and complained about Valve's treatment of adoption. If you're not an adoptive parent, it's probably not that big a deal to you. This is despite the fact that GLaDOS even criticizes Wheatley for making an adoption joke in the same scene he was complaining about, something news outlets conveniently cut from the clips they showed. Everybody forgot that villains do and say bad things in every form of media because they are the villain. What exactly is wrong with being adopted? What, what's wrong with being adopted? Uh, uh, well, um... Lack of parents. For the record, you are adopted and that's terrible. Number 18. Cooking Mama Bitcoin Miner. Cooking Mama Cookstar. Was 2020's Cooking Mama Cookstar released in an effort to covertly use the Nintendo Switch to mine large amounts of Bitcoin for its developers? Well, no. That theory was ultimately debunked, but it still caused a lot of fuss upon Cookstar's release from people terrified that their Switch was being hijacked by a malicious video game. As well as that, Cookstar was also quickly taken off sale on all platforms in North America because it didn't actually have the Cooking Mama license, which was removed very shortly after the game was released because of a legal dispute. Its removal further fed the rumor mill that the game was trying to harvest cryptocurrency in one of the weirdest controversies on record. <laughs> Number 17, Jim Sterling gets sued. The Slaughtering Grounds. This isn't in early access, by the way. This is a, a finished product. Just thought I'd point that out. Everybody should be able to call out a game that's bad and trying to rip people off. That's what influential games critic and YouTuber Jim Sterling did when they played The Slaughtering Grounds, another game from the infamous shovelware developer Digital Homicide. This is on Steam. They're selling this. But Digital Homicide was so offended by Sterling saying its bad game was bad that it tried to take them to court for defamation and libel to the tune of $10 million. Of course, Sterling won the lawsuit, which was dismissed by the court with prejudice for being a completely insane waste of everybody's time. I, th I think it's an incredibly despicable, underhanded attempt to undermine my free expression and stop me doing my legally protected job, like I said. Number 16, Dinklebot, 
destiny. I'm picking up fallen activity. Heavier than normal. Something has got them worked up. I'll stay on it. The troubled launch of Destiny may not have been helped by Peter Dinklage's performance as the AI ghost that assists you with missions, objectives, and feeds you lore. In fact, responses to his voice work were so lukewarm that Bungie eventually announced it was going to be hiring video game veteran Nolan North to redo all of Ghost's dialogue. I'm a ghost. Actually, now I'm your ghost, and you? Well, you've been dead a long time. Despite the fact this seemed to be what some players asked for, others took great issue with the removal of the Dinklebot, as Dinklage's ghost came to be known, with many petitioning that Bungie either don't go through with the plan or give players the option to choose which actor they wanted to listen to. Don't do that. Don't do that. Number 15. Stubbs's Dietary Requirements. Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse. Baby! Did I just see some... A few Puritans were deeply offended by Stubbs the Zombie back in 2005 over what they perceived as a game encouraging cannibalism because you need to eat brains to recruit new zombies and regain lost health. We can can't breathe! My partner! They'd apparently been living under a rock since the 1960s and had no idea what a zombie was or why it was necessary for a game about zombies to feature zombies eating people, missing the point of the game entirely. It was lambasted as being offensive and dangerous to children, despite the fact it had an M rating and children shouldn't have been playing it anyway. Uh, no, 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 no. Number 14, Apple vs. Epic and Google, Fortnite. Tell them it's cause I like to win. In 2020, Epic Games tried to take Apple to task for taking a 30% cut on all sales and microtransactions in the App Store, despite the fact that this is standard for every single retailer, digital or physical. Epic is taking legal action against Apple filing suit to end what it calls Apple's anti-competitive restrictions on mobile device marketplaces. It's referring to the cut that Apple takes of revenue from games store, uh, sold within the App Store. The reason this controversy is so silly is that Epic, which is a giant corporation as well, positioned itself as a hero of the people fighting back against the tyranny of the App Store and Google Play. And we've already seen enough of Epic's own shady business practices that taking a side in the lawsuit to help Epic line its own pockets definitely isn't a good look or helpful to consumers. Filing an antitrust lawsuit against Apple, calling the App Store a monopoly, flexing its enormous power, and imposing unreasonable restraints. Number 13, Fingerless Gloves, Grand Theft Auto 4. So, so you full of crap or what? What? Uh, where's luxury condo? Where's sports car? In much of the promotional material and loading screens for GTA 4, protagonist Nico Bellic can be seen sporting a pair of fingerless gloves to help him withstand those Liberty City winters without sacrificing his ability to shoot a gun. Unfortunately, players quickly found out that there aren't any fingerless gloves you can wear in GTA 4. Outrageous! <laughs> no. What do you mean, no? It's widely believed that Rockstar cut the fingerless gloves before the game came out, but there are still people baying for the gloves to make a return to GTA. Thankfully, if you're playing on PC, you can install mods that do what Rockstar couldn't. If you, too, just can't live without seeing Nico wear fingerless gloves while he commits crimes. Number 12. Dance Emotes. Destiny. Fans were up in arms yet again when, in 2015, Bungie announced the Taken King and a collector's edition for Destiny. The problem was that this collector's edition included all the expansions, but also many exclusive emotes, gestures, and cosmetics, which could only be obtained by purchasing the $80 collector's edition. Mm -hmm. 
This meant that dedicated fans who'd already bought all the Destiny expansions as they were released would have to buy all that content again if they wanted to unlock all the cosmetics. It was a bad move on Bungie's part, but equally strange to witness was players getting this worked up about not having every dance emote in their game. Number 11. Pro Slavery Mortal Kombat Fans Mortal Kombat 11 If I think only about helping myself, what kind of officer am I? What kind of man? Depending on what character you use to beat the final boss, you'll get a different ending in MK11. When playing as Jax, he goes on to use time travel to go to the past and stop the transatlantic slave trade from happening. But most people who look like me haven't had that chance. I owe it to them to put things right. Though this seems like a net positive, a small minority of MK players got very upset and claims that this was equivalent to racism against white people, accusing Nether Realms of fueling racial divisions. It's strange to imagine anybody was offended at the idea of preventing and ending slavery, but this vocal corner of the internet backs themselves into a bizarre pro-slavery stance in their objections. The world's a better place for everyone. Turns out, you can have everything. Number 10. Starfield is a Microsoft exclusive. Starfield. That's why we're here. To discover what's out there. Bethesda's next big RPG was announced before news broke that Microsoft was seeking to acquire Bethesda's parent company, ZeniMax, in a billion dollar deal. The acquisition went through, and people spent months speculating on whether Bethesda's games would suddenly become exclusives to Xbox and PC, which ultimately turned out to be exactly the case, where Starfield was concerned at least. And go with us on the journey as we craft our next epic. The problem is that the same people upset about Microsoft preventing PlayStation players from getting their hands on a AAA release were the same people who spent the better part of the decade mocking Xbox for having no exclusives. Be careful what you wish for. Number 9. Fruit Won't Explode – Halo Infinite Originally slated to be a flagship launch title for the Xbox Series X, Halo Infinite languished in development for at least a year beyond its initial release date. When the beta finally dropped in summer 2021, it had a lot of fans, but it had just as many passionate critics who wanted to find everything wrong with it. Let me see what I can find. Cannons first. When I get back, we can look. That went beyond legitimate gameplay criticisms and developed into people complaining online that the fruit in Halo Infinite doesn't explode as good as the fruit in other FPS games such as Call of Duty. How dare Microsoft make a game without realistic fruit-destroying physics? <sighs> Set a fire in your heart, Spartan. Number 8. Offensive Zombies – Back for Blood After years without a new Left 4 Dead, the original developers came back with a game that was Left 4 Dead 3 in everything but name. However, during the beta period for Back for Blood, players were quick to notice that some of the zombies seemed to be using highly offensive racial slurs. I had a selection of washable cloth wipes. Yeah. Oh. Was this a clever trick to encourage players to fight off the zombie whores with even more verve? Well, no. Warner Bros. was forced to make a statement that the slur was heard when two different zombie sound effects played together, something that hadn't been caught by the devs and which would be rectified before the game's full release. Matt! Number 7. Buttgate Overwatch 
A few weeks ahead of Overwatch's launch, and some people were up in arms about one of Tracer's victory poses because it appeared to be very butt-centric, since she had her back to the camera and was wearing skin-tight pants. People thought it was objectifying, and Blizzard ultimately opted to remove the animation, though developers claimed they were already going to do so before the backlash. However, the outrage didn't really spread very far, and to many. It looks like a lot of fuss over nothing. After all, pretty much everybody has a butt, and it's not like any of Overwatch is actually explicit. Play of the game. Number 6. Dead Rats Battlefield 3 A world leader in getting offended at things nobody else finds remotely disturbing, PETA took great issue with Battlefield 3 segment where the player must kill a rat to progress. They saw this as glorifying and even encouraging animal cruelty and campaigned against DICE and EA. Come out in the open! I didn't see it as an act of aggression! As usual, everyone ignored PETA, since the organization has allegedly been embroiled in many controversies over the years. But we all know that the bigger problem was DICE choosing to include a ridiculous rat-killing quick-time event in the first place. Number 5. Bully Promotes Bullying and Bisexuality Bully <laughs> Rockstar probably saw this controversy coming when it opted to call its game set in a high school bully, but decided to do it anyway, and predictably, people were upset. Jack Thompson, the attorney most famous for railing against violent video games and Rockstar in particular, claims that the game glorified and encouraged bullying, despite the fact Jimmy spends the game taking down Bullworth Academy's unpleasant factions. I give you... Russell! Oh man, me Russell! Gary, now I hate you! But there was yet another controversy still to come. One that actually got the game banned in some places. If you so choose, Jimmy can kiss a boy at the school as well as the many girls. Something which ruffled a few feathers. Uh, 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 uh. Number 4. Smash Crabs Super Smash Bros. Melee If there's one thing sure to upset a Smash player, it's somebody opting to play as Jigglypuff in a competitive setting. That was pro gamer Juan Hungrybox Debatement's crime when he was assaulted in a very unusual way during a Melee tournament in 2019. After Hungrybox won a match against fellow player Mango, somebody in the audience was so insulted by his victory that they threw a dead crab at him. Nobody was hurt in the crab throwing incident, and the person who did it was ultimately banned from attending any more tournaments. Hungrybox took it in his stride, however, and later ate a crab during a live stream. Bro. Number 3. Lindsay Lohan sues Take Two, Grand Theft Auto V. I mean, you can tell I'm so girl next door, right? Are you listening to me? Over the course of four years, Hollywood star Lindsay Lohan tried to bring a court case against Take Two Interactive for using her likeness in Grand Theft Auto V. The costly lawsuit dragged on until 2018 when it finally lost in the New York Court of Appeals. How out of touch are you? I'm Lacey Jonas! The crux of the suit was that the character Lacey Jonas constituted using her likeness without permission, and it was finally ruled that even if the character was a parody of Lohan, something that couldn't actually be proven, it would count as a portrait, and thereby wouldn't be using Lohan's likeness without consent. It seems Lohan just wanted a piece of the GTA pie and failed dramatically. Lacey! Who's your new boyfriend? Whatever! If you want to put my life at risk... 
Number 2. Mass Effect is not not safe for work. Mass Effect. Mass Effect is what it's called. Uh, it's made for Microsoft's Xbox system and it features some, in some parts of this, you'll see full uh, digital nudity. Back in 2007, sex scenes and romances in video games were still relatively novel. It wasn't that they didn't exist. We'd already had San Andreas's hot coffee scandal after all. But for some reason, Mass Effect was the title that really got people riled up. And unless you're hovering over them every second, they're going to find ways to see this stuff uh, on the internet. How damaging is it really? Fox News ran an attack piece against the game with the headline Sex Box, not only because the game included sex scenes, but that the most egregious sex scene was between two women, Femshep and Liara. And one of those women was an alien. It didn't matter that there was next to no actual nudity or that you could only reach a sex scene after embarking on a relationship with that character. It is becoming distressingly common in this day and age that discussions about culture are hijacked by politicians and the media only to simplify their meaning and lock out legitimate voices. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Puddlegate, Marvel's Spider-Man. Yuri, I'm here. What do you see? When Spider-Man released in 2018, it quickly made history as one of the greatest superhero games ever made, and perhaps the greatest Spider-Man game, a PlayStation exclusive that further cemented Sony and Insomniac's reputations for putting out outstanding titles. That's why it's hard to imagine now the pre-release controversy about an alleged graphical downgrade. Jeff, I'm here. What do you see? The reason behind all this? There were two images of the same puddle of water circulating, and the more recent image showed less water on the ground. Insomniac was forced to explain that the puddle was simply made smaller and that there was no downgrade, but people still spent a few weeks complaining. You got this? I got this. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.